Sigurd's danger level, 70%. There's no file on this one, so I'm making it myself. We keep finding these stinky freaks in the mansion. They won't talk to us, they don't even pay attention to us, and they look like deflated balloons. The smell is like rotten meat. It's so bad it puts Richard to shame. I hear flies buzzing around the inside of their bodies. Jess said she saw something crawl out of its eye socket and go back in. I just don't know what to make of this man. They just walk around and sweep the floor. I guess that's why the mansion is so clean. At least they do their job. But I swear those stinky freaks stare at me when I'm not looking. Update. They chased Rich with a knife. We didn't see it, but he says when we got into the room, the butler just took out its broom and started sweeping like nothing had happened. So we're all sticking together from now on. Screw these butlers. Now I have to stay closer to Rich and he probably pissed in his suit. Sigurd's danger level, 70%. Scientific name, Repaxfolium. There is a debate to the genus to which the bracken belongs. It is a bipedal vertebrate with skin the color and texture of a red beet. The name is coined from what appear to be the leaves protruding from its upper spine. The purpose of these is believed to be for intimidation. However, not much is known about the specifics of bracken behavior due to its elusiveness and low population. We know a little from accounts by wildlife experts who have encountered it. It is a lone hunter with high intelligence. Its behavior can seem aloof. It exhibits high aggression even when unprovoked, yet quickly backs off when confronted. However, brackens are known to up their hostility when cornered or simply watched for a long time. It's theorized that upon death, their bodies undergo a rapid decomposition process which is unique from other large animals. Sigurd's danger level, 80%. Scientific name, Vircologus. Veer colodris, or colloquially named coil heads, are a recent discovery and have not been studied extensively due to their extreme unpredictability and dangerous properties. They have been known to combust into flames when being dissected or even deactivated, and they carry dangerously high levels of radioactive particles. Due to this and other reasons, it is highly speculated that they were created as biological weapons of war, although this has not been proven. Coilhead's visual appearance is that of a bloody mannequin with its head connected by a spring. Their defining behavioral characteristic is to stop when being looked at. However, this does not appear to be a hard and fast rule. When they encounter a loud noise or bright light, they appear to enter a long reset mode. To stare at them or use a stun grenade, Sigurd. Sigurd's danger level, 30%. Scientific name, Therophosa Fisedla. Bunker spiders of the genus Therophosa are the largest arachnid found in the Thistle Nebula, and the second largest ever discovered. It's believed they evolved to prey on large mammals over the course of a measly several hundred years after the boat made its trip around the Thistle Nebula. Bunker spiders produce silk and lay it around their chosen nesting area, then wait for it to be tripped on. They could be seen waiting on walls, often over doorways where prey could enter unaware. If you find a bunker spider unprepared, it may freeze as a defensive reaction. And in this case, they are best left alone. If a bunker spider reacts aggressively, it is best not to fight with ordinary tools. They use their webs to make up for their rather slow movement, so take note of your surroundings. Their cobwebs can be easily broken with any blunt tool. Bunker spiders can pose a great danger to humans and urban explorers especially, without a great benefit to their ecosystems. A resulting kill-on-site order has been informally agreed upon between many states home to the bunker spider, and it is currently approved by the ITDA as of 10-6-1965. Sigurd's danger level, 2% because they can't hide from the ship cameras. Scientific name, Hemadella gigantes. The reverently named Earth Leviathan of the family Piscolotidae is one of the largest invertebrates found around the Thistle Nebula. None have been captured, so not much is known of their biology. They seem to behave as predators. It is speculated they can burrow as far as 40 meters underground, judging by the incredible excavations they can leave behind. They can detect even the slightest vibrations, and for this reason, it is not recommended to stay still if they are nearby. That is a myth. Instead, if you hear them burrowing, retrace your steps. Sigurd's danger level, 50%. Scientific name, Ceterid Proceritus. 
Believed to share a common ancestor with Rapix folium, these behemoths are called forest keepers for the biomes they often inhabit. Their bodies bear markings on their front and back which mimic eyes. This trait is more helpful in their youth as they are not agile. Their skin is unique, dense material which hardens further throughout their lives. The large spikes and bumps across their bodies form as a result of aging. It's been said forest keepers exhibit a curious behavior similar to that of a human child at the age of five or six. They will eat anything they find fascinating. Forest keepers don't actually need to put anything into their mouths. As it's theorized, their main source of energy is a process similar to that of photosynthesis. Still, this makes them relatively dangerous to observe. They can see across long distances, so staying low and making use of cover is a must. They cannot enter small spaces and are generally not destructive. So stay close to shelter or overhangs. Sigurd's danger level, 75%. Scientific name, Papeo Voltorius. Baboon hawks are a primate of the family Cercopithecida. They are hunchbacked but can stand up to 8 feet on average. Their heads are bony with bird-like beaks and long horns, which they use like skewers to gore and feed on prey. Their horns are made of keratin instead of bone like the rest of their skulls, and they do not contain nerves or blood vessels. As a result, baboon hawks can often break their horns from the force they apply, then fully regrow them within the same season. Baboon hawks partly owe their name to their large wings, which can never carry their large body mass and are instead used for intimidation and protection from the elements. The largest baboon hawk troop ever observed was made up of 18 baboon hawks. They are loosely territorial and much of their behavior is motivated by intimidation and display. They can become collectors, using flashy or colorful objects to mark their territory. As lone scouts, baboon hawks are generally timid and won't attack unless provoked. In greater numbers, they can become a great danger. Sticking close to others and making yourself seem dangerous is the best way to prevent an attack. They prefer smaller mammals, but when desperate, they are known to use their numbers to attack animals even twice their size, such as eyeless dogs. They took my pickles. Sigurd's danger level, 90%. Scientific name, Crabrocoruscus. The circuit bee, also known as red bee, is a eusocial flying insect of the genus Apis, a descendant of the honey bee. Their appearance is quite recognizable from their hairy red bodies and two sets of wings. Like their ancestors, they are well known for their intelligent social behavior, large colony size, building wax nests which they use to store honey, and their important role in pollination. Unlike the honeybee, which often shows high places such as trees to construct its hive, red bees create their hives on the ground. Red bees are highly defensive. They will leave the nest to attack any creature that comes within several meters, leaving behind only the queen and the drone bees. This bold behavior is enabled by their most defining ability, which is their electrostatic charge. Red bees produce friction with the air. They also produce friction rubbing their two pairs of wings against each other by rubbing against one another while in the hive. What allows them to create such a surplus of electric field compared to the honeybee is still under research, as they generate a stronger electric field when panicked or angered. This ability is especially useful for them around water. It's beast to keep your distance. If a red beehive is stolen, red bees' swarms will enter an onslaught in which they attack any living creature. This destructive behavior will last until they have located their hive or completely exhausted themselves, which can take hours to days. They have been known to leave behind fields of bodies of small rodents, insects, and even some larger mammals, and in rare cases they can start fires. Their strong benefits and drawbacks to their ecosystems are highly debated. Be baited. The indomitable Sigurd. Scientific name, Leo Cacus. A large mammal of the class Septivus. They are social, hunting in very large packs. They have also been called breathing lions for their recognizable sound and large mouths. They are endurance hunters and try to make up for their lack of sight with their sense of hearing. It's a popular myth that they often mistake the sounds of their own kind for prey, entering fights within their own packs. Their behavior is unique from other pack animals and their tendency to spread out far to cover distance. 
When a Nihilus dog has found prey, it roars to alert others in near vicinity, who will also sound the alarm, sometimes resulting in a kind of chain reaction. Eyeless dogs can be dangerous in swarms, however they are characteristically clumsy, taking guesses at their prey's exact location which are often incorrect. Seeger's danger level, 0% if you are faster than a snail. Scientific name, Hygrodeer. A eukaryotic organism classified within the paraplegic group Protista. With incredible speed of reproduction, these small organisms can multiply to millions. Hygrodeer rarely split apart, instead choosing to form large viscous masses which can take up large amounts of space and become a great danger to deal with, requiring large tools or lures to relocate. Hygrodeer are drawn to heat and oxygen and can detect it from seemingly anywhere. There is almost nothing organic they can't convert to their own body mass. Nothing has been found to poison them, constantly replacing themselves, they can persist for hundreds of thousands of years. If you ever find yourself cornered, find a tall object to stand on top of. Hygrodeers have trouble climbing. They have great taste, because I made a friend with one somehow, and we think it was my music. Sigurd's danger level, 90%. Get out of here before it goes ape. You can't hide from it, just evacuate. Scientific name, Insanus Thingus. There's no freaking scientific record. Good luck, you know as much as us, we just call it the Jester. The Guardians of the House. They watch with one tireless eye which only senses movement. It remembers the last creature it noticed whether they are moving or not. Sigurd's danger level, 0%. Scientific name, Quadrups Manta. Manticoils are a passerine bird of the family Corvidae. Their bodies are quite large compared to their early descendants, and their wingspan ranges from 55 to 64 inches. Their most defining characteristic is their set of four wings. Their back wings are mostly used to stabilize when at low speed, while their front two wings create the majority of lift. Their round bodies are a striking yellow, but with black outlines or stripes along their primary rear feathers. Manticoils mostly feed on small insects, but can also feed on small rodents. They are highly intelligent and social. They pose little threat and have a generally passive temperament towards humans, although they are capable of transmitting rabies, rubench loria, and pit virus. Sigurd's danger level, 90%. Halves or thumpers are a highly aggressive carnivorous species of the order Chondrithes. Their skeletons are cartilaginous, giving their bodies a stretchy and rubbery quality. Their name comes from the fact that they must eat their bottom legs in order to escape the shell of their hatched egg. Their bottom legs are hardly functional to begin with. Their arms, or front legs, are very strong and occasionally use them to stomp prey. They can reach great speeds in a straight line. They are relentless hunters, typically at the top of their food chain. Their main weakness are their intelligence and complete lack of hearing. If you come across a thumper, your best means of survival are leaving its line of sight, as it's slow around corners and can't easily track prey. Due to the fast and volatile evolution of this species, some theorize that thumpers are one of the examples of increased number of mutations causing higher levels of speciation in planets around the Thistle Nebula. Sigurd's danger level, I don't know, probably 5%, I just hate this pudgy little sh**. Scientific name, Lacerita glomorum, quioquily named puffers or spore lizards. Lacerita glomorum, of the family Alligatoridae, is one of the largest and heaviest reptiles. Despite their large mouths, they are herbivores and do not have a strong bite. The bulbs on their tails are believed to secrete a chemical which attracts and accelerates the growth of the fungus species Liperda perlatum which it can then shake to release spores as a defense mechanism, a unique example of a mutualistic symbiotic relationship. Spore lizards have a very timid temperament, avoiding confrontation if at all possible. If their attempts at threat display are not effective, they may attempt to attack. It is therefore not recommended to corner or chase one. There are historical records that spore lizards were at least partially domesticated hundreds of years ago. However, this effort was set aside by an initiative to harvest their tails for their medicinal properties. Sigurd's danger level, 30%.
a very large arthropod of the class Chilopoda. Its body produces a silk which it primarily uses to propel itself to places where it is concealed. Its exoskeleton is somewhat fragile and it can die from long falls. It makes up for this weakness with its ability to tighten itself around large prey to suffocate. The snare flea thrives in dark warm areas. It cannot survive low temperatures and generally avoids open air and sunlight. Take the rats outside or just beat the hell out of them. I think their insides could make a good milkshake. Sigurd's danger level, 0%. Scientific name, Anacridium vega. Known as roaming locust, this is a species of grasshopper. Unlike some species which are prone to jump or fly, roaming locusts are almost never grounded and stay close together even in smaller numbers. They will quickly disperse when a predator disrupts them, but are highly attracted to light. Sigurd's danger level, 95%. The old bird is an autonomous offensive weapon of war with a humanoid design. Measured at 19 feet tall and 11 feet wide, its two most defining visual features are the spotlight positioned on its head, capable of emitting 100,000 lumens, and the long-range acoustic device on its chest, sometimes referred to as a sound cannon. There are two additional speakers on its shoulders used to broadcast sound a long distance. The old bird's left arm is a claw and its right arm is a nozzle capable of both launching rocket-propelled grenades and torching at close range with a very hot flame. Old birds are one of the first extra-orbital weapons to be used and mass-produced. The subject of who developed the old birds has been an intense debate since their first recorded appearance on December 18, 2143, when over 50 old birds invaded the Anglin capital. This is considered the first major causes for the downfall of the Anglin Empire. The most commonly upheld theory takes into account the tension between the Anglin and the Bumak military throughout the 2100s. However, nothing has been proven in the centuries since. The design of the old bird down to the tempering of metals appears intended to conceal its origin. It has been called the walking ransom letter. Old birds' legs function as rockets, which allows them to travel long distances and find targets efficiently, but the most likely reason this feature exists is to help them enter and land from orbit. The material and fuel old birds rely on is similar to those of passenger spacecraft from around 2130. Old birds land and stay at their target planet forever, although they often have more than enough fuel for just one trip. No behavior has been found in their programming which suggests they could choose to migrate. Still, there are unverified accounts of old birds traveling autonomously to a new planet after hundreds of years of dormancy. The old bird was historically referred to as Al, based off the codename it was given by the English military, the A16L31, in 2384. However, the song Old Birds released as a cult hit by the post-punk project Under Remora. Just three years later, in his most famous work of the same name, street artist Land Erie depicted the automatons flying and landing between planets in an arrangement similar to a flock of geese. This is generally considered one of the most iconic and influential images of modern culture and solidified the modern nickname. In 2356, Five Embryon was classified as condemned for the purposes of travel or settlement by the boat. Old birds were described by witness accounts of lining the horizon, though to this day they appear inoperative, there is a reasonable risk that they are still in sleep mode, so the planet will likely keep its status. Don't mess around or they will give you a ride. They lose track quick and they can't turn very fast, they're dumb and they won't shut up. Sorry, caps. <laughs>